Hello, and welcome to the No Expectations Video Store Podcast. I'm Ben Steerick. And I'm James Hetty. And today, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting Max is mic'd up. Mike. And uh, Max is here too. Max Headroom, everybody. Check, Check him out. Headroom. There he is. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so today we're talking about 1992's In the Soup with Steve Buscemi and a lot of other familiar, famous faces that went on to be pretty successful. You got Stanley Tucci in there. You got a very, very brief, very young appearance from our boy Sam Rockwell. Yeah. Um, and this was all di- also directed by Rockwell. I don't know if there's any I relation. No relation. I did look it up. Um, Interesting. I guess they met through Jennifer Beale. Oh, you, uh, okay. The other star in that film too. Yeah. Yeah, no correlation. I thought so too. I was like, yeah, maybe it's his brother or something, but no. Interesting. Okay. And then there was somebody else in there, the chick who played one of the ladies of the night, one of the prostitutes uh, with the old guy. She came in. She was she was in Goodfellas. She was like the side girl in Goodfellas. And she went on to be she went on to be on Entourage as well. Interesting. Even though Goodfellas would have been before this. Um, and then Jim Jarmusch, who, you know, does a, a wee bit of acting, but went on to be a hugely successful director. He also acted as the uh, the porn guy, the Naked Truth guy. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah bigger stars and directors, like you said, Jim Jarmusch. Yeah. Um, in this film, very briefly, but it's mainly focused on Steve Buscemi. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, what what are your initial thoughts on this movie? This was this was a weird one, but it was like intentionally weird. So, like, I can kind of give it a pass on a lot of things. I mean, going into it, I thought very film school ish, but. It's because it's set in the 90s, and that's a lot of movies back then were doing that black and white. And mm, yeah. I did see that it actually was filmed in color, and yeah. he just in post production. Yeah, for the theatrical release, it was black and white, and then for the home releases, it was color. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, in a way, like I would have had a different like interpretation of it or different thoughts on it if I would have seen it in color. Yeah. Like, I feel like it would have been more just like a quirky indie comedy where this felt more like a artsy indie comedy. Yeah. Just because just just... black and white. Throughout the entire film, whatever the guy's joke, right? He said, like, it's uh, like, I love the art. It's so much art. You get yeah. a lot of art to it. Yeah, know? yeah. And, and hey, kid, I'm going to fucking bite your ear. Yeah, weird. Weird character, yeah. The entire movie was very artsy. Um, yeah. Not not to its benefit. No. Now, there were parts of it I liked. Like, overall, like, it's not a bad movie. Um, You know, it's it was it was okay. Like, I'm glad it's out there, you know. But there were definitely parts of it where I'm kind of like, ah, this could have been a, a little more mainstream in some areas, you yeah. know? Yeah, but it was it was all right. Um, I think the director only did a few things uh, for sure. Yeah, but it was it, it felt like someone's first movie, it, which I believe it was. I, it might have been honestly. Yeah, and what was interesting was I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but um, the director it was based on a true story. Like the director had actually encountered a guy like that who was like trying to fund one of their projects, and of course they you know took some creative liberties, you know, um, with some of the you know more violence and mm. you know some some of the crime aspects of it. But um, like a lot of it was based on a true story, and then they kind of just exaggerated it for the script. Well, the movie set in New York City, where Steve Buscemi was living. No, no, no. I'm kidding. It is. <laughs> continue. Uh, through Max Headroom. Continue. Continue. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's a movie about him getting funding for a film, and I don't know if he was going to direct the film or not. But uh, four years later, he uh, directed his first film. So. Maybe it was kind of like where he was at at that time in his life where he uh, he wanted to, he was in front of the cameras doing some indie films. This film, uh, In the Soup, went to Sundance and actually Did won the Grand it. Jury Award. That's impressive. So uh, wow, maybe kind of like it helped him sort of uh, become who he wanted to be behind the camera too. That makes sense. Now, Max had a really good point. Our boy Max Headroom over here. Um, it was his breakout year. This was like a big year for Buscemi. What else did he do this year? Max? Uh, Reservoir Dogs with, oh. you know, the Tarantino film. You may have mm-hmm. heard of it. Oh, hi. A little, little sleeper hit over there. Yeah, and then before this, like, his only big roles he had were uh, uh, in a couple of Coen Brothers films, like Rat Fink, or what was the name of it? Barton Fink. Barton Fink. Man, whatever happened to those guys? <laughs> Bunch of obscure nobodies, right? But yeah. Now Buscemi is the household name, and there's he has and has memes and everything. Yeah, he's amazing, and I, I still think to this day. I know I've said it before on the podcast. Boardwalk Empire, one of his best projects ever. Like, I never got to finish it, dude. So good, Max. Have you watched Boardwalk, Boardwalk Empire? Empire? Yeah. Um, I did see you did that. Was that on HBO? Yep, HBO. They did like five. I believe five seasons. It might have been six. I think five though. 
But dude, absolute masterpiece. Like mm. so, so good. Some of the best writing, some of the best acting, some of the best set design and costumes I've ever seen in a show. And I dare say, I know people are going to hate me, more so than Game of Thrones. Better done than Game of Thrones in terms of attention to detail, set design, costumes. Oh, yeah. Game of Thrones left a freaking Starbucks cup in there. There's <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, who am I to talk? You know, maybe one day when I make an HBO show, then I'll talk some smack. But Game of Thrones, they got their own thing going on. They're fine. But uh, Boardwalk Empire, dude, amazing. Just a personal favorite. Just so much freaking good. First season. I remember I joined it. It's just like, it was like the Sopran. It gets, it gets way. Oh, I get so much. I'm trying to watch all three of those. It's a bad idea. I'll yeah. get back to it. Yeah. Sure. Boardwalk Empire, I was kind of in the same boat as you. I watched the first season when it came out because I was like, oh, Martin Scorsese, executive producer, Terrence Winter with The Sopranos. I was like, oh, Steve Buscemi, like we got a great cast, great uh, creative team behind it. But uh, I watched the first season. And I got really bored. I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. It's like, I don't really care. And then I went back and rewatched it a few years later, like after it was like getting close to ending. And I was like, well, that was pretty good. And then I watched, and I watched the second season, and I'm like, oh, this is something. Like kind of like with Breaking Bad, where it's like you get that second season, and you're like, oh, I underestimated this show. Like this is this is really good. I yeah. Watching it you on know, streaming first, and it was still on uh, TV. And I watched like the first three seasons, and then I watched it the last two seasons, I believe. Yeah. Television. So freaking good. So freaking good. But I would say that's one of his best. I did really enjoy the movie he directed, and I think he wrote Trees Lounge. Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. That's a highly recommend for me. Um, and I would say pretty much any appearance he has in an Adam Sandler film. Yeah. yeah. I'm a huge fan. What is your, what's your favorite appearance? Uh, crazy Eyes. Crazy Eyes. Yeah. Sausage. Uh, that or Mr. Muffin. Jeans, right? Sausage. McMuffin. Yeah. Yeah. That or us. Or no, Big Daddy. Yeah, it's a Big, Big Daddy. daddy. Like Big Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. Big Daddy. Um, oh, wait. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Crazy Eyes was Mr. Deeds. Crazy the, Mr. the bum was Big Daddy, but I get them mixed up because they're so similar. Very similar. Oh, peanut butter and gumballs. Nice combo. It's probably the, the same character. Yeah. So I wonder, did he put a contact in his eye for that or was he able to control his eye to make it like googly? After. Hey, Adam, how googly do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're good, buddy. You're good. <laughs> Whatever you're doing. Um, sausage McMuffin. I did a lot. For me, it was the doing shrooms era. For me, it was more the uh, doing mushrooms era. <laughs> or whatever he says. <laughs> uh, but no, he is he is amazing. Also, of course, how could we forget Fargo? Yeah. Like, freaking amazing. 90s were a huge time. Oh, and Big Lebowski. Big Lebowski. He was part of, like, some really seminal films, like, really good ones. Yeah, and they're all kind of down, like, the whole indie vein, kind of. Like, mm -hmm. even Big Lebowski, uh, like... Yeah. I mean, I don't know, like... I bet he has lots of cool friends in the industry. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, and he's super well-respected. He's still, I mean, we're still talking about him right now. We're doing an episode about him in 2024 as of the recording of this. Evergreen content, hopefully in the future. You know, you guys will be watching. But, um, yeah, just a just an iconic guy and a lot of respect for him. And I hope he's doing better after his punch. They arrested the guy. Good. I hope that mofo spends some time in the in the clink. He pressed charges. I didn't really read into much, but all I know he pressed charges. Good. Good. Well, he can he can go to pound, fed, federal pound him in the ass prison, right? But yeah, okay. So let's get into the movie a little bit. Um, what uh, what was one thing you really liked about it? Or let's do a couple things. Couple things you didn't. Couple things you really liked about it. A couple things you did not like about it. Uh, pacing started to, like I think we talked about this a little slow in the beginning. For sure. I, I literally sent him like a Snapchat. And I was like. Just falling asleep, yeah. yeah. And then the more I got into the movie, I was like, okay, this is starting to get better. I like, I like Joe. I think he's a weird. Joe was funny and weird. He's yeah, a weird character. Like, yeah, love hate him. You're not sure which way he's gonna go because yeah, he does a lot of shit. To yeah, Steve Buscemi's character. What is what's his character? Alfonso, right? Something like that. Yeah, like it was like that. Alfonso Ribeiro. <laughs> I don't. Know. He has a lot of gets him in a lot of trouble. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Uh, other things I like about it, I, I will. It's kind of harsh, but I like. So Sam Rockwell's character right there, yeah, I thought it was just the funniest thing. It was hilarious, yeah. Uh, he he played a very good mentally challenged mentally person. Challenged. I, I it was I very convincing. I didn't know I mean, that's his character. It just yeah, I don't know where Yeah, he sold it. He sold it. He sold it for sure. Yeah, I I think he he likes you. He calls you the flower guy. Yeah. Well, why is he calling me the flower guy? <laughs> he thinks you're bringing the flowers every day. I am bringing the flowers. I bring a figure. You're my star. You're my angel. I do bring the flowers. I mean, I send them. And why would you do that? 
because you're the star of my movie. Yeah, so there's actually some cool lights in that movie. For sure. I know. I, I mean, bad parts of the movie, um... Yeah, it was just pacing. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Tucci was a little weird. Tucci, I almost wanted to see more of him. Really? Yeah, I didn't like him. Yeah, he's, uh, I heard he's not a good tipper in real life. I heard he, he, like, doesn't give good tips at restaurants. It made me think less of him. Yeah, Tucci, Tucci. Yeah, it made me think less of him. I also heard uh, the same thing about Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Legends, great basketball players, but apparently terrible tippers. They they would call him No Tippin' Pippin. <laughs> I feel like you mean. <laughs> I swear to God. Anyway. <laughs> no Tippin' Pippin'. No Tippin' uh, Pippin'. And Michael Jordan, a, you know, multi-millionaire and probably even close to a billionaire by now. Doesn't tip well. Maybe well, maybe he's learned his lesson. I don't know. But hey, in the soup. Okay. From what I hear, pretty good at basketball. <laughs> so you know, there's that. Yeah. The soup. Other things I liked. I uh, saw some uh, some fun facts. The fact that uh, so that was Steve Buscemi's car. They were driving with him and Joe. That's like, his actual car in real life. It is real life. These last or so you can talk about movies on a budget for sure. Yeah. So yeah. there is a short film that he shows Joe yeah. in there, and Steve Buscemi actually filmed that I believe with his mom and his dad. Really? Or like. You were like relatives and friends that were actually. So it was like a low budget yeah. indie. The, well, the director asked him to make a film and he did it. Wow. And in the script, Steve Shimmy actually wrote a script uh, for them that showed him. So that, All right, and it's going to be 500 pages. <laughs> so what he was reading was actually Steve Shimmy wrote himself. That's amazing. I don't think he wrote 500 pages. But no. He was reading on the screen. That's pretty cool. Even if it was a short script, you know. So without finding those fun facts, I wouldn't even care as much, but I think that's pretty cool. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes it adds to it. And then for those of you who haven't watched it or who are on the fence about watching it, I'd say check it out. Like, especially if you like Buscemi, if you like uh, 90s indie films, like it's worth a shot. It's like an hour and a half. I think it was like an hour and 36 minutes. Um, no, it's not It's not a waste of your time by any means. It's not great. It's not perfection, but it's decent. It's definitely decent. And it's on YouTube. And it's on YouTube for free as of right now. Spanish subtitled. So, hey, for our Latin American friends, there you go. Yeah, there's a couple of times where, you know, Jared Beale's character yells in Spanish. Yeah, you get to see some nice tits too. You do <laughs> some nice tits. Yeah, there's uh, I, a girlfriend. Uh, I feel like she might have been hired. Uh, girl of of the older guy Joe who's there, and she's she's naked every once in a while. And it's nice. Too. It's a nice. Yeah, she's cross too, probably. But there's there's a nice little uh, you know little eye candy in there too. If you, you got it, looking at you got Shemmy's it. face once in a while. Love him though. Um, as, yeah, as a, as like a person who's produced films, worked on films. I find the film to be extremely relatable. Um, I mean, finding funding for a film project is yeah. never easy. Yeah. And sometimes it feels hopeless. Yeah. So what were a couple of things you liked and didn't like about it, Max, besides the relatability? Um, yeah, I liked it. It was relatable. Um, Steve Buscemi's performance was nice. Um, it's just, he's young and... Uh, yeah. What did I not like about it? I don't know. Nothing. No, I didn't really. I didn't really dislike anything about it. I d it just wasn't great. You know. Yeah, I get that. I get that. It was. It was mid in some. It was mid, but it's also an indie movie from the nineties, and you kind of get to view yeah. into you know, what a time for film. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't knock it too much. I would say things that I liked. Um, I'll agree with you. The relatability. There's definitely a part. That I think every one of us in this room, and probably some of you guys watching her into film, can relate to. Where it's like, oh, I'm working on a thing. It's like I'm a screenwriter. It's like these guys have all, you know, written and directed things at various points in their life so far. And it's like, yeah, relatability. Um, I like the cast. I mean, it's like some of the cast, I, you know, we'll get into alternate castings in a minute. But um, Buscemi in particular, I liked. And actually the guy who played Joe, he was he was fine. Like that was my first time seeing him. And I'm like, who is this guy? He seems like he should be in more things, you know? I don't know. Was he I not? I'm not a, I guess he's with someone else and asked you with alternate cast. Okay, yeah, kind of a Gene Hackman vibe a little bit. We'll, we'll get to that. Um but yeah, as far as yeah things I didn't like, um, yeah, I guess, I guess it would come down to the script. I would say, and, and I, you know, I, I can be forgiving because, like you said, it is '90s, very low budget, very independent. Like I get it, I get what it is. Film festival circuit movie. It's almost like an aesthetic at that point. Yeah, but like the script, I, I would say the script was lacking just a bit. But that being said, like a, like a little like a little too artsy, like where it's kind of like a little. Um, avant-garde a little avant-garde and a little film schoolish al dente 
a little then a little underdone. That was the purpose of it, though. Yeah, but I. But that being said, I liked it. Like, it was a good movie. Um, we should go back and watch it. Probably not. Yeah. Probably a one-time watch for me. Too much, but it's it's worth a watch. It's worth a watch for sure. Yeah, I would say yeah. So so uh, the script could have been better. Film school aspects not my favorite, but overall, like the cast, like some of the humor, and like some of the weirdness. Yeah. So you want you guys want to get into ratings? Yeah. All right. What's the rating, James? I give it a solid three, three out of five. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Max. Because the cast. I give it uh. I'll give it three 500-page film scripts out of five. So wait, what? So three out of five? <laughs> three out of five? Yeah. Okay. I actually, believe it or not, I rated it a bit higher, I think, because I, I did take into account it was indie, it was low budget, it was artsy. Um, I gave it a 3.6. What's with the 3.6? Yeah, which was really high. And that was my initial. And the more I thought about it, I thought, wow, that's a little high. That's a little high. Um so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna whittle it down to a three point four. Okay. Yeah. Three point. Hey, I didn't know we were doing uh, decimal points. I'll do a three point three. Yeah. Decimal points all day, dude. <laughs> decimal points all day. Max is trying to be crazy with the editing process. Yeah. James, you could you can cry about it all you want. It's a three. It's a three point four. Damn it. It's a three point four point zero 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 eight. Is what it is. Three point four. But um, is that a little generous? Sure. But um, it's it's low budget. It's indie. I I see where they were coming from. And the fact that like he was using his own car and stuff, which I didn't even know, that makes me respect it more. Uh, so yeah, 3.4, far from perfect, one-time watch, but it's all right. It's a way of making me feel important. For sure. Like when I watched it, I was like, okay, that's good. It, it, it left me feeling something. You know? Yeah. Um, but it wasn't a masterpiece by any means. Um, okay. So let's go into alternate castings. Max, kick us off. Alternate castings. Uh, sure. So um, while I was watching the movie, I kind of was reminded of uh, the cable guy in a way, you know. <laughs> you have the uh, Steve Buscemi's pretty lonely and kind of uh, this guy just comes into his life and, and like becomes his instant friend. Yeah. And uh so I thought I don't I don't know, like Matthew Broderick, is that that's the guy who plays yeah. yeah. And then Jim Carrey would be Joe. Um, oh no, we're going full cable. Guy. Leslie Mann as Angelica would be <laughs> oh, <laughs> would be freaking awful. That would be the worst. Uh, it's hard to recast her, but uh, she's. I love her. Maybe so you much. have an, an actor that would be good from that era. Man, Leslie Mann is one of my biggest Hollywood crushes. Yeah, uh, I would marry. I would marry. That I just woman. don't think this role would be good for her. No, yeah. I used but, to have a big crush for him, like cable guy. And I, I never like. I guess like a future movie is like Leslie Mann. I'm like, oh, I like her. And then yeah. I'm back and watch she killed. I was like, oh, that. Big Daddy, she was so fine. Oh, yeah. Corinne. Yeah. Don't go by the frozen food section. Your boobs will harden. I think she's just funny. I think she's... She's amazing. This is 40. She was really good. This is 40. Yeah, she's she's incredible. A real old version. I wonder if she's ever been topless in a movie. Hmm. Yes. Oh, has she? What movie is that? I believe it was in This is 40. I don't remember that. Hmm, maybe I watched it on TV. Jeez. Interesting. She's a beautiful woman. Big fan. All right, my alternate castings. Uh, okay, so mine were a little bit different. Um, I picked my first choice, very first choice, would be Alan Ruck from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Succession, Speed, Alan Ruck. I think he has a really great vibe. I think he's somber when he needs to be, but he's also very funny. He has good comedic timing. Um, I would have picked him as the lead, as Steve Buscemi's character. Buscemi. Alfonso, right? Uh, my second choice would have been Andrew McCoy. No, Adolfo. Adolfo. Uh, Sorry, Adolfo. Alfonso, at least. Is who? Uh, the director of the movie. So I think it's Alfonso Rockwell. Oh, okay. Me. No, no relation to Sam, right? No, oh, sorry. It's Alexander. I thought it was a girl. Okay. And then my second choice would be Andrew Andrew McCarthy uh, from, you know, Less Than Zero and Weekend at Bernie's fame. Uh, I think he's great. He's awesome. He's funny, but also he's, he's genuine. Uh, and my third choice for a lead would have been Bill Hicks, the stand-up comedian Bill Hicks. Um, I don't know if Bill Hicks did much acting at all, but I think he could have pulled it off in this. Like it would have been, he would have still been alive for a couple of years and, uh, cause he sadly died of cancer pretty young, but he's just funny and sarcastic. And I think he would have been a great guy for this, uh, for the old guy, for the Joe character. Uh, my, my first choice would be Rodney Dangerfield. That's a good one. I thought Rodney yeah. would have been great. I think if we would have cast this, it would have been a lot more funny. I think we would have leaned into the humor a bit more instead of the artsy side. Um, so yeah, Rodney would have been good. Uh, second choice would have been Sam Kinison. I think him and Bill Hicks together could have been pretty cool. 
Um, and he would have been crazy. Like he could be really sweet and funny. And then also he could fly off the handle and be wacky. Um, and then my last choice, I got to pick a third one for Joe would be Danny DeVito. I think Danny DeVito could be funny and weird and yeah, yeah. I just did it. Crawling in bed with him. Bed with him. I crawl his I... We could play one quick game of night crawlers. <laughs> <laughs> and then last one was the love interest, the neighbor. I picked either Lorraine Bracco, Selma Hayek, who she would have been yelling Selma, Selma would be good. Or, um, Jamie Gertz from Less Than Zero. Selma Hayek came in my head, but I just thought she was too popular. She came? She came. In your head? Yeah. All right. He was in my head. All right. Oh, any, no, any more? Oh, that's it? Those, those are my three? All right. I, I'll i start. So, Steve Buscemi, I did the same as Max, Matthew Broderick. I think we're on the same wavelength because it did bring me out. Uh, Ferris. Ferris. Vibes. Ferris Bueller, baby. It did bring me like, like cable guy kind of vibe to me, like you same with the random guy. Kind of it was a little uneasy. Yeah. Yeah. A little <laughs> uneasy. <laughs> And suspense below where. Yeah. But I just, like, I closed my eyes and I just pictured him, like, Matthew Roderick as, a, like, I think he would have done a good job. I close my eyes only for a moment and the moment's gone. Dust in the wind. Uh, for Joe, the, I think it was Star Seamer Castle, I chose Dennis Farina. He was in that Get Shorty. Um, I mean, he was the older guy in there. He had more comedic interest. I think he would have. He looks. For some reason, I thought that was Gene Hackman again. I'm just mixing everyone up with Gene. Yeah, yeah I thought it was him. Hmm. Um, I think he would have been a good choice. He looks exactly like the same character, but he has more of a charm, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, for Jennifer Beals, I chose Rachel Ticotin. I might be butchering this. She is from Full Recall. That was oh another Hollywood crush. What a dime piece! I, I don't. I saw her. Like I thought it was her first. Like, yeah. Like, Wait, okay. Yeah, she's got it going on. I think she would be good. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. She's an angel. She is an angel. Um, and then I did one last one. I did director. Oh, I, I need to do that too. I can you do direct. I'll do it off the cuff. It's been a while. I see a uh, a young Carol Kane. Is she was hot? I thought. Who's Carol Kane? Yeah, who is Carol? Kane? She was the woman who got him onto the nude show. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Not bad. Yeah, she's also in like uh, yeah that new. She's got like kind of high pitched voice. Yeah, you're gonna be fine, honey. Very you do New Yorker. Yeah, come over here. Yeah, she was kind of yeah she was cute in her day for sure. Yeah. Um. Sorry yeah. To interrupt. No, no, you're fine, dude. You're fine. Um. <laughs> not fine. Get the fuck. Stop <laughs> talking. We were talking about That's Hollywood commercials. All right. Yeah, she's a that, cutie. That that segment's up. She's sweet, but uh, director. Real quick. I'll I'll make up a director and a writer, but you go ahead. I'll start. So I just I chose Ben Stiller. Oh hell yeah! So everything's Cable Guy. Cable Guy. Yeah. Who was your? Did you come up with a writer or not? No right. Oh, I mean, probably Ben Stiller. I agree. Oh man, just off the top of my head, just because I thought it was a Jim Jarmusch film and he's already acting in it, I'm gonna say Jim Jarmusch for director and writer. Okay. Yeah, but if I got to mix it up for writer, fuck it, I'll say Phil Hartman <laughs> for writer because he's funny. Yeah. I almost thought uh, it was starting Ben Stiller that night. I don't know. The oh yeah, that was he directed one. That was not his best film, and I think that would have been another director for this because it just has that vibe. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. So those are the ones I can think of. That was really good. That was really good. Solid. I like both those. I love the cable. I can't talk. The cable guy influence, and then I love the uh, the Ferris Bueller mindset that we all fell into. Hell yeah. In headspace. Yeah. Yeah, Max Edrum. So uh, as for the next one, we're going to spin that young wheel and we're going to see what we're going to do. We, uh, you guys will be excited to see. We added some new options for possibilities for next episodes. And um, yeah, let's see what we got. Oh, should we explain them first? Let's explain them first. Uh, yeah. All right. So first off, we got, we'll alternate. I'll say one. James will say one. So we got Cutting the Cult, which is obviously you've seen a few of those episodes. We take a cult classic horror movie or a lesser known horror movie and we watch it, we review it, and we see if it's worthy of cult status or if it should have been left on the cutting room floor. Next one, uh, I believe it's It Could Be Better. But we just find a terrible movie. <laughs> Try to fix how it could be better. Yeah, yeah. We, so we find, a, yeah, we find a, a, a crappy B-movie that's like really low rated. We watch it, and then we... Yeah. How could we improve this? Yeah, yeah what, what could we do to make this a great movie for sure? Uh, uh, Max, what would be another one? Uh, I don't know what any of them are. 
I know. Cutting Perfect. the coal. Did we do cutting the coal yet? <laughs> we did. Okay. Uh, uh, watch a fan film. Yeah, watch a fan film. Uh, That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. We watch, watch a fan film, film on YouTube. Is it a fan of the show? Or is it like if someone was a fan of a movie, they they made their own film like a Star Wars? So ho- hopefully both in the future. But initially it would be people who made a fan film of like, it could be anything. It could be Star Wars. It could be Spider-Man, Batman. It could be literally, literally anything. It could be a, a fan film of any kind. And then we're going to do our best to shout them out and then maybe even possibly have them talk on the show for a little bit if anyone's interested in connecting. Um, but yeah, we're going to review a fan film. And then the last one would be... Actor, writer, director? Yep, actor, writer, director. So we pick an, a, a random actor, writer, director that we like. Doesn't matter, anyone. And then we select one movie from their filmography and watch it. Pretty self-explanatory. And then I, mean, I think I forgot one more. Oh, go to the movies. Goes to the movies where we just go to the movies. That's the one where we go to the movies. Right? Yeah, and then we, uh, you know, we put a hole in the... Oh, actually, we already got a hole in the dune bucket, so we're good. And then we uh, talk about what we saw at the movies. And we do like a little remote... But anyway, spin that young we wheel. Leave, we leave the house. All right. Come on, Pat Sajak. It's spinning. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh, I was looking forward to this one because I like shitty B-movies. Hell yeah. So we got It Could Be Great. So we're going to watch a B-movie. Let's, so let's pull up a list of like the top 500 worst B-movies. And um, I guess we don't even have to say worst B-movie. It could just be B-movie. It could be a B-movie. You know... Bruce Campbell stars on a lot of B movies. Um, it's actually a big library that I haven't seen of his. I heard Jerry Seinfeld did a B movie. Yeah, I heard Jerry Seinfeld did a B movie. Uh, the Pop Tart one. Oh, I, I meant the actual B movie. Oh, well, like <laughs> the Pop Tart movie was actually supposed his newest movie. Supposed to be. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a pass. Is Kramer in it? I don't. I haven't watched it yet. I'll have to watch. No, it. he's not in it. No, no, no spoilers. He's basically just Jerry. Okay, <laughs> and Wilbur as Kennedy, right? And Amy Schumer, what's he thinking? Amy Schumer. One thing I will say about Amy Schumer, though, as much shit as we've given her over the years, and how she does... Um, you're right, I'm a huge fan. Um, but everything that I've heard about her from Mark Normand, even though she is apparently a joke thief, and, I mean, it's it's proven she's a joke thief. Um, from what I heard from Mark Norman, though, she's very, very generous to other comedians and, like, really helped with Mark Norman's career, which is a huge surprise. Like, he was, like, broke, like, broke as a joke just starting out as a comedian she's like really liked him saw him in this club he went on a big tour with her and like he was like so broke he couldn't afford a good jacket and she bought him like this like fancy jacket and like really helped him like get established and like yeah really took good care of him so i was like okay i'll give her a little bit of respect for taking care of her fellow comics and helping the little guys become big guys but aside from that um I can't condone the joke thievery and yeah. just the Being big from stealing from the yeah, and then the the shitty the sh- yeah. So yeah, she doesn't get a pass, but that's just one little. If I gotta find one good thing about her, but the rest sucks, and her comedy sucks, and her acting not yeah, that great. People still be throwing her and stuff. When he murders in the building with Steve Martin and Martin Short, she's in season two. Oh really? It's I I love the first season. I wanted to watch season two. It's so hard for me to get. Busy. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, I'd much rather have Melissa McCarthy. She's in the new season, season four. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Melissa McCarthy at least has some talent. Right. Um, so what are we doing here? All right. So we got 10 movies. I just got, I pulled up Chad GPT and- 10 B movies? Uh, I just said the top 10 worst movies of all time. Okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Let's spin, a, spin that wheel. And if we've already all seen it, I mean, we should probably spin it again. Sure, sure. Lucky number- Nine, or nine. Okay, number nine. Nine. Uh, number nine. Howard the Duck. <laughs> oh shit! This. <laughs> I enjoy Howard. <laughs> I've I've never seen Howard the Duck. All right, let's go. You're gonna like it. I've never seen Howard the Duck. I've heard I've heard from a lot of people. <laughs> it's horrific. I mean, Leah Thompson's in it. Yeah. And I love her. The Room is on the list, and that's notoriously the Ooh, best yeah. worst movie. I say we stick with Howard the Duck. Yeah, it's Howard. No, yeah. No, I'm just that's, saying that's kind of the the, the, the Ducks on there. Because it's like a cult oh. classic, I think. And I love that. Okay, so you, when was the last time you saw Howard the Duck? Were you more than 10 years ago? Wow. I think, I believe. No, you know, my sister. Well, that's good. It's, okay, if, I'd say if it's anything over five years, we're golden to watch. Max, have you seen uh, Howard the Duck? I have not seen it. I've never seen it. I just know Leah Thompson's, who's another contender for one of my favorite Hollywood crushes. Uh, I know she's in it, but yeah, we should watch it. Um, I know my dad has the story of them going on vacation and him getting really sick, like right when Howard the Duck was a new movie. So he was like staying in San Diego, like in this hotel room with like food poisoning. 
And he just like was <laughs> stayed and watched Tower of the Duck on like HBO at this hotel. And I remember saying like, yeah, it wasn't very good. He's like, <laughs> but that's like his main memory of it is like having food sickness and watching. I have always enjoyed it. Really? Okay. I, it wasn't it wasn't Tim Burton, was it? No. No. I know it's produced by George Lucas. Interesting. <laughs> It was right at that era, obviously, before CGI, where it was like Ninja Turtle style yeah. costumes. Okay, Howard the Duck, it is. Holy shit. I want to say like 1989, something like that. 88, Howard the Duck. But no, never seen it. Very excited. Um, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad. Okay. Yeah, that was Chat G. Great job, Chat GBT. That's the first accolade I've given to Chat GBT. I don't work anymore at all. I just can Chat GBT does most everything. That's the best. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah, you have to put the input, though. Yeah, the prompts. I'm a professional prompt writer. You're the prompt man. Speaking of which, I haven't watched Dudesy in a while. Shout out to Dudesy. Shout out to Dudesy. Yeah, I I don't think I'm up to date. New was probably dropping this week. Yeah, because I was watching them in order, and I got to like episode like seventy something, but then my job got a little more busy, and I couldn't listen to podcasts as much. But um, now I'm kind of back to. I think I could watch more. Podcasts. What is it? Douchey? Yeah, uh, Douchey. No, Dudesy. Uh, Douchey is another podcast. Yeah. Will Sasso and Chad Colchin. Uh, when we were actually in middle school and high school together for a while, we had a bus driver named Howard. Did not like him at all, and we would call him Howard the Fuck. Man, us? Yeah, you remember that? I actually remember how I don't remember calling him Howard the Fuck. I, I, yeah, I remember Howard. Yeah, because I remember uh, Alan. Well, and I, he, we were on. Okay, so we were on a separate bus. That's so, right. But for a little bit, we had the same bus. And be we were segregated. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, his name was Howard, and he was a real asshole. And I remember he was just real mean, like someone that shouldn't have been around kids. Like, he was just a real piece of shit. And um, I remember me and Alan one time, well, we were being little douchebags, but, you know, anyway, we uh, there was a sign out front, and we changed the letters. It was like piano something recital, and we changed it to piano fuck recital. And we got caught by Howard the fuck, the bus driver. And uh, he, like, got us in big trouble. We had to do detention, and we had to mop on the weekend and come in and do and scrub the walls. And it was really bad detention oh my god and um yeah and so we always hated him because of that we were like 13. breaking news mummy director responds to rumors brendan frazier almost died yeah. on set while filming he did yeah the, the hanging seas and yeah. then yeah and then the uh the director said brendan did it to himself well not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily stephen summers Steven Summers is the director. He's just trying to limit his liability. That's what his lawyer did. Yeah, he's like, Brendan wanted to do it. He said. <laughs> he was feeling depressed. I said, well, go for it. I said, go for it. He, uh, he didn't want to do his own stuff. Of course, which I do respect. I do respect. And I guess Rachel Weiss did a lot of hers as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of them back then did. Uh, Johnny Depp may be returning as Captain Jack Sparrow, which... Jerry Bruckheimer can... Interesting. ...get the ball rolling. Yeah. I love, love, love seeing these guys coming back. I love seeing Louis C.K. come back. I love seeing Johnny Depp come back. I love seeing guys who were like, you know, kind of on the outs for a while with Hollywood and going through shit in their personal life coming back. You know what? Okay. I don't. Pirates of the Caribbean. The first two movies were great. I'm sorry, I know. You don't want to see Johnny Depp come back? I don't really want to see him. I don't really care. I feel like there's so many good actors out there. For sure. Well, Pirates, I mean, I love Pirates of the Caribbean, but it just it ended three. after, it feels like it ended after three. It was, it was two more after that. Even three wasn't the best. One and two were the best. Well, I hope they don't do it like tongue in cheek or, you know, they. it's just a money grab. Is it? It's a money grab for sure. Anything Disney at this point is a money grab. Disney hasn't been authentic in like 30 years. Like they haven't done anything real. Like, I think all the Star Wars stuff Disney has done, no offense, trash. Um, there's elements of it. There's a few shows that have certain things that are good, but overall, it's, it's all a money grab. Anything that's Disney now is a money grab. Uh, and, and unfortunately, Pirates falls into the category. But I do think the first two were pretty darn authentic. Yeah. Well, they, originally, they were going to have Margaret Robbie do the new Pirates. Yes. Dropped out. Stupid. I mean, Mar Margot's great, but like that's stupid. Yeah, but they're, they're throwing her in everything. Yeah, it's obnoxious. All right, now we're going to have Timothy Chalamet as Captain Jack Minow. That's stupid. Uh, and Zendaya. I hate it. All right, um, what else we got? Deadpool and Wolverine team. Dishes rumors about cameos. Taylor Swift, Dazzler, and more cool characters. Wow, that sounds I, like... I don't want to look at that. I don't... 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, don't really I hate that. that. I know. I hate when everything, like, like it's one of those you're going to have to see as soon, like, you're going to have to see it the minute it comes out. Otherwise, it's going to be like, here's every fucking cameo. Here's every Easter egg. I'm like, yeah, TikTok, Instagram. I know. That's one thing that we have to get used to for the rest of our lives, unfortunately, unless we, like, really fully, like, stay off social media or just watch things on opening video. Yeah. But, like, I hate that we're, like, you don't even get to wait till the weekend it comes out. People are doing it from fucking pre-screenings where it'll be like, oh, here's the cameo. Here's, you know, even before seeing Doctor Strange, it was like, oh, here's Krasinski as, uh, as Mr. Fantastic. Not a huge spoiler, I'm sure, you know, sorry if it was. But, um... I just look at that and it's just like, come on, guys, like give it, give it a week. There should be some grace period of like, let everyone, let everyone be surprised, let everyone enjoy it. But I don't know. What else we got? There's a movie about COVID nineteen, classic, called Coma, which a teenage girl's feelings of inner. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty dark. That looks stupid. This is not Angel Studios. <laughs> this is. Was he gonna stab herself? Oh, we're in a mask. Oh, authentic. I'm sick. I'm gonna stab my hand. Yeah. I'm mentally ill. That's yeah. the plight of the... It was a rough time, but come on, come on. Anyway, what else we got? Ooh, every DC movie in development. Ooh, one thing I would like to talk about is they're doing a Batman Beyond movie, and it's going to be, apparently, the same people who are behind uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I don't think they're doing it. They're not doing it? That was, So the guy who did... I don't know if they changed it, but that guy who did Into the Spider-Verse developed that. I wanted to sh- pitch it. Mm-hmm. Brothers. Wow. I would love Batman Beyond. I, I would love like, it. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, Batman Beyond would be sick. That'd be such a cool way to do it, too, because it's it's not as much pressure as a live action Terry McGinnis. What do we got with Lord of the Rings? All right, we got another money grab movie. It's a. Circus actually directed it, so the voice who did call him, I think he's directed. My precious. It's interesting. There are re- Was there, is this based on. Uh, so there was Oak, or is it an offshoot from the movie? Lord of the Rings? No, I mean, like, is <laughs> is this uh, The Hunt for Gollum a book? I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't sound like it. In fact, guys, so if, if we had a fan film to do, there's a fan film of The Hunt for Gollum. That's beautiful. And they were going to do legal action with that. Movie, but I don't know. This, it was, like, 15 years old or something. Speaking of fan films, just since we've we've just added this uh, to the wheel of excitement, uh, or whatever we call it, the NOX wheel, um, what are, just off the top of your head, some of your favorite fan films that you've ever seen? Uh, I like Dirty Laundry. Same. It's my, probably my number one. Probably my number one. Punisher. Fan films. I don't. I don't watch many. Punisher is a fan film. I thought that was. I like. There's a real one, but they did. Uh, Thomas Jane did oh, one. Oh, I see. On his own, called Dirty Laundry. Like I want to say, like 2012, something like that. That's true. Like I just had one. I watched a new one recently. It's real. Spider. It's from the guy, uh, the kid who played Carl in Walking Dead. After Okay. It's basically Spider Man, um, but it's what if he got like his powers became awful, like his stickiness ripped the guy's skin off out of him, like Flash. That's great. So it was kind of cool, and then he started like growing eyes all over the place and stuff. They made it a horror film. Some of the guys did like the Shrek horror movie. That sounds cool. It was pretty good. It was. That is cool. Seven to ten minutes long, I believe. Okay. I I recommend it. Not a terrible watch. Okay. Did they ever make a King of the Hill movie? This isn't movie Itch. news, but this is, uh, I'm, I love animation. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think it's been 21 years since King of the Hill stopped running. And now they're making one, a reboot, and, uh, Bobby's gonna, it's, Bobby's gonna be, uh, 21 years old in it. Damn it, Bobby. Dude. I, I predict <laughs> he's gonna be like, a still like a 21, like a year old virgin or something. Like, I feel like maybe. Maybe that's the story. He's trying to get laid. I'm so glad. I hope it's still fully Mike Judge involved because otherwise they, I feel like, I feel like it would go the, the woke route. Like they'd like really screw it up. We just won't have Lou Helmer, but I feel like a lot of people can do his voice if they need it. Oh, Boomer is still around. I think you're thinking uh, Dale. Dale, sorry. Dale, Dale yeah. Won't have but I need to get a man. So fun. Boomer, man. So I'm just like a second cigar, man. <laughs> a lot of people are supposed to say Dale. Yeah. Bobby Hill is, uh, oh, um, yes. Oh, that's right. Uh, the land. She she went with uh, what was his name? Uh, Buckley's Angel. Oh, she's definitely has I kids. I love Buckley's Angel. Uncle Hank. I love King of the Hill, man. That was actually one of the first scripts I ever wrote in my entire life for Mr. Callahan's class. I I think I remember reading it. Yeah, I and I and I still have a copy of it somewhere. Maybe we'll read it sometime. We'll bring it in. And... You know, we should all read some of your scripts. Yeah, that would be a blast. 
it would be fun to read the original because you'd see how out of format it is, and it was written by 12-year-old Ben. So it's like... Oh, you have a script from when you were 12 years old? From when I was 12, I wrote a King of the Hill script, and it was all about a pie-eating contest that Dale was in, and uh, cockroaches all over the place. We all have to read scripts. Again? Yeah. I don't even hire I don't know, but that's what got me into screenwriting. I remember Mr. Callahan had a book before I was even deeply into Seinfeld of the first season of Seinfeld, all the scripts from the season one. And I remember looking through it before I was even like deep into Seinfeld and like looking at it and being like, okay, I get this. And th and I, we had this teacher who was named Dudley Callahan. Shout out to him. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, he was a language arts teacher back in seventh and eighth grade and into high school. And um, he uh, used to write for the TV show Grizzly Adams. That. And he was a screenwriting guy, and um, re yeah, really cool. I, I thank him definitely because like he, uh, he got me into screenwriting, and that was like really important. And it was one of the first things I re I really felt like I was like decent at. You know, he was one of those teachers like if you don't learn anything from any other teacher, I learned something. For sure, yeah, he was I awesome. Was such a thing. Both like English and history, it was like life. I think I told you this, but I ran into Dudley Callahan a few years ago at Sprouts. And grocery store here, if you guys don't know. And um, I was like, oh, shit, Mr. Catland. They're like, do you remember me? He's like, vaguely. He's like, it's been a long time. But he's like, oh, yeah, Ben, Ben. And I was like, can I, like, just talk with you? Like, can I buy you a sandwich? He's like, no, no, I'll get my own lunch. But we'll we'll sit together. And so we got sandwiches and we sat. They had, like, these tables where you could eat out front. And I talked to him for, like, an hour. And we just, like, caught up. And it was like he'd have these knee surgeries and he got super healthy. And he was back into, like, doing tennis and stuff. And he looked very healthy. I'm sure he is. He was older, but um, I did get his email. I'll give you his email. But I feel like the good teachers are happy teachers. Yeah, happy, happy people live long time. But he he was he was awesome. He had a big temper. Yeah, but it was Irish. But it was always a little sarcastic. Yeah, it was sarcastic. Like he'd like freak out on people, but there was a part where you're like, oh, he's playing around. Sarcasm will add years to your life. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got. Uh, buh, 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 buh. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Forgetting something. No, you're not. Oh, Happy Gilmore too. Happy Go More well, is coming out, and it is in production right now. Nick Swardson is going to be a part of it. I heard Tiger Woods is going to play Chubb's son. Oh, <laughs> really? I didn't know. That's cool. Yeah, Tiger Woods is going to be Chubb's son, apparently. That's the rumor on the street right now. Why? Yeah, and um, Rob Schneider, I'm sure, is going to be in there. Spade, I'm hoping, is in there. Spade would be a funny other golfer. It'd be funny if there was, like, a celebrity golfing match. And fucking David Spade was in there, like as himself. That would be amazing. What's that guy who was jackass? He passed away. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, look, jackass is one of the business. Yeah, 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 yeah. He passed. You jackass. You suck. You jackass. He's like, but he's a shooter. He was apparently uh, quite the character actor and was part of the uh, Second City in Chicago too. Like he did a bunch of stuff in the '80s, and uh, he was more than just a jackass guy, which I didn't know until recently. Well, uh, th there's a clip from Adam Sandler. He was on the Dan Patrick Show. Do you guys want to watch it? It's an update on the on the sequel. Hell yeah! Let's let's talk to Sandman via satellite. <laughs> Look at me. All right, picked yeah. up a little bit of steam. Shooter McGavin shot off his mouth a little bit here. Yeah, he did. He certainly did. He texted me uh, after the fact. By the way, that thing you told me not to talk about, <laughs> I talked about. Oh, well, that's good news. Uh, <laughs> no, all I did was tell him. See, I did stand up. I did a comedy special and a lot of uh, my buddies came by and Shooter was one of them. And I said, dude, we've been talking about uh, a happy two and we're working on some stuff. That's all I told Shooter. I said, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell anybody. And then he and then he he, you know, he kept it mostly private. He told a couple of DJs about it. That's they usually are great at secrets. Don't you think? Yeah. So anyway, that's interesting. Looking forward to it. Um, love the sand, man. I saw a funny video where he went into like a Waffle House or something recently. Everyone's like, oh my God, Adam Sandler. He's like, hey, hi, everybody. <laughs> and he's just so chill. He, he's just so, he's like one of the most carpet. Yeah. He's like one of the most down to earth, like chill comedians I think we have. I will say with Happy Gilmer too, I'm not super happy that's just going to be a Netflix movie. I'll probably have a release in theaters. Yeah. I'd love to see it. But like, that's going to be in theaters for a couple months at least. Yeah. That's one thing I hate about the Netflix projects. Like, I'm glad. We're getting stuff. Like, did that new Beverly Hills copy even come out? No, that's that's prime. That's prime. I'm actually looking forward to that. Um, Coming to America was not good. Was bad, yeah. Man, I've heard so many bad things about Eddie Murphy on set now. It bums me out, dude. I heard he's like, like people go up to talk to him and stuff that are like working on the project. They get fired like on the spot. Like, I heard he's like really 
really bad about that, which sucks. Well, what if they suck? What if they deserve to be fired? Maybe, then fuck them. But I still love his work, though, and I do love and respect Eddie Murphy's uh, acting and comedy for the most part. Oh, Eddie Murphy did that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought Adam Sandler did that. No, no, Sandman's great. I feel like Sam has nice to everybody. Yeah. I feel like if, if Adam Sandler was mean to somebody, they probably deserved it. Oh, of course. No, yeah, I love, I, I support anything Sandler does for the most part. Like, he's awesome. But, uh, no, I heard Eddie Murphy's pretty rough to work with. But uh, who knows? I don't know the guy. But I am looking forward to the new Beverly Hills Cop. But I am looking forward to this. But based on the track record of Netflix, dude, a lot of those projects suck balls. I haven't even watched Sandler's last bit. Base one, yeah. Yeah, last thing I watched with Sandler was uh, probably Hustle. With you. We didn't, that was one of our last episodes we did in 2022, I think. Um, and then before that was probably Hubie Halloween. Oh, uh, it's already Mystery 2. So I like the Mystery I haven't watched them. Really? Okay. My favorite Netflix one that he did was The Do Over with David Spade. I watched it twice. I watched it twice. I thought that was good. And then uh, one of my favorite Happy Madisons of recent was. Um, uh, the wrong Missy. That was hilarious. That was so funny. Also, anybody who's still sticking with us on this episode, sorry to cut you off. Anyone who's still sticking with us on this episode, uh, if there's other stuff you'd like to see us do or potentially add to the wheel or other movies you want us to talk about, drop them down below in the comments. Uh, I can't promise we'll get to them anytime soon, but maybe, just maybe, we'll add them to one of our lists. Also, like and subscribe, mofos. Um, I don't know. Friday the 13th director cuts down hopes of a new Jason movie. Maybe that's for the best. Yeah. What are you saying? It's not going to happen? I, that's what it's sounding like, yeah. How, how much you want to bet they turn it into a TV show? They're, they are coming out of the Crystal Lake. It's going to be a Peacock uh, TV show. There you go. Well, I heard some really disappointing news that I want to share. Sure. Um. So, the Tron... 3D was like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, and they right after the movie they they were talk there were talks of a of a sequel. Uh huh. And uh, Disney like canceled it. Ooh. And then they tried to get all the original actors back on it when they turned it back on. It and it's I think it's in production right now. And uh, they have all new actors, whole new timeline new characters yeah. when it was supposed to be a continuation of the Flynn story. Yeah. yeah. And it's just the offshoot. And so no, no Jeff Bridges? You know, he's going to be in it. Oh. I don't know what role he'll be playing, but I really like, I actually really liked the two Tron Legacy, the 3D one. Yeah. I I like how it ended with like, she escaped. I've never seen any of the Tron Master. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a cliffhanger. Is it really good? Well, Daft Punk did the whole soundtrack. Daft Punk's not on the new one. Okay. Um, I feel like if they just would have hit it while the iron was hot. Yeah. Then, like done it like a year, like a, two years later or something. Yeah. Then they would have had an amazing movie with actors and the writers were pissed off because they kept on changing the script and yeah. to the point where it just it took 10 years to get to this point of just making a, an offshoot. But, you know, uh, who knows? It's made by Disney. Yeah. Uh, that's a shame. I mean, sometimes there's someone will like Favreau will like be a part of a Disney project and make something awesome like yeah. The Mandalorian. I'm hoping it's going to be something like that and not just uh, Disney just fucking shit up, which they probably will. But hey, I'd say there's a slim chance. You know, like you said with the Favreau stuff, like there's there's some good nuggets that come out. I would say like out of every twenty Disney projects, like two are decent. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Would you guys agree? Maybe three. Within the last like ten years, yeah. I mean, with, with I lived Disney money, in the nineties. It was great. The amount of money they pour into the films, yeah, they're it's sad a, when they're not good. I know it's a bummer. Yeah, it's 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 anti Disney for sure with with this crew. Right? <laughs> there's there's parts of Disney I love. Like I grew up. I mean, as a kid, like I friggin' loved like The Lion King. I loved Aladdin. Like I loved like that kind of stuff. Like that era of Disney. Even like early two thousands, like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, was it Atlantis Disney? Like they're all freaking like really good there was really good stuff i mean granted we were kids as well but like now you look at it i go back to the yeah yeah pixar stuff like there's still some great stuff but there was there was definitely a turning point i want to say around well heck we already would have been you know pretty grown up at that point i would say around like 
when The Force Awakens came out. That's when things yeah. started. You think that's the happen. point the CIA uh, took Disney and turned it into a side out? Yes. I think that's when the hand went up Mickey's ass and he became a puppet. <laughs> he became a puppet. Um, I would say, I would say to that. What, 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 what's going on here? I don't know. Oh. Uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, 2010, 2012, that was kind of the downward slope for Disney. Um, I'd say it was a spiral. It was a spiral, yeah. It was a nosedive. Uh, anyway, guys, anything else you want to add? That's it. I think that's the episode. I guess I will add uh, next week we won't have an episode, but we will be releasing a short film. Oh, you're getting a short film, babies. You're going to like it. And if you guys are new here, go back and check out our back catalog. We have like literally like a year and a half worth of episodes that are pretty good. You've got some stuff that were like cult classics. We've got totally movies that you've never heard of, like totally obscure, weird ones. Uh, and then we've got a lot of like classics that we really enjoyed um, that we did some fun reviews on. So go back into the channel, dig into the archives a little. I think you might be happy. Uh, anyway, guys, be kind. Be kind. And subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that end of wings.